Hey guys, Jeremy here for The Armory Life. You know, I've always been really drawn to the tactical style of firearms. Call it too many video games or movies as a kid, but they're just plain cool. So when I had a chance to attend a Pistol 3 class from ER Tactical, I knew exactly which gun I wanted to run. The Springfield Armory XDM Elite OSP. In my opinion, the best way to test a firearm is to really put it through its paces during a formal class. There's usually a lot more stress, high round counts, harsh weather conditions, positions you might not normally shoot from, and working on skills you may not have mastered yet. Now with all those, you are certain to see where a firearm can shine or where it can let you down. So when testing a new firearm, what I like to do is look at the features and benefits and see how those play out in the real world or at the range. So when running the XDM Elite OSP, this was my list that I was interested in. The 5.28 inch hammer forged steel threaded barrel, the suppressor height sights and how they co witness with the dot, the slide serrations, the new optic capable slide, the meta trigger, the position and design of the slide release, the grip texture, the mag release, the flared mag well, the beaver tail safety, and overall general reliability. A secondary benefit of testing a new gun is testing new gear. So for this class, I chose some of my favorites from STAC, the Kiwi pouches and their shooter's belt. For my holster, I went with the T-Rex Arms Ragnarok holster with a Safari Land QLS mid-drop. And testing out the dot on the firearm, I went with the Vortex Venom for its really large window. So let's take a look at my list and see how the pistol did under these circumstances in my hands. The hammer forged steel barrel. Now I wasn't running a suppressor, so I wasn't taking advantage of the threaded barrel, but the gun was extremely accurate far more accurate than I will ever be. And I do down the road plan on testing some suppressors on this pistol, so big benefit there. The suppressor height sights and co-witness. Now these are really high sights and they will probably co-witness with just about any dot on the market. The Vortex Venom that I chose is a little bit of a taller optic on the body. So it kind of co-witnessed with these, you know, it's not the full one third. So really picking up those irons pretty quick if that dot fails is not, uh, it's, it's not gonna be the easiest but it did work and it was able to slide in the dot just by co-witnessing the irons. So that's a huge benefit. Now, especially with one-handed reloads or manipulating that slide, those will come in really handy. It was very easy to manipulate the slide on my belt or on my holster because of those really high suppressor height sights. Also, I usually prefer to have some sort of color, at least on my front sight post. Uh, these ones are all blacked out, but when running a dot, that was kind of nice because there wasn't anything competing with that red dot in my field of vision. Slide serrations, super easy to manipulate the slide. I don't think they were too light and they weren't too heavy and they look awesome. So the optic ready portion of the slide, I think is really cool that Springfield allowed users to be able to use whatever dots they want by just buying the footprint plate. And that's great because maybe you wanna try multiple dots before you settle on the right one. And getting a slide that's cut for maybe one or just two dots can be difficult if you don't like that dot. The downside to that is because there's a plate there, the dot doesn't sit quite as low as it could, but it's really not that big of a deal because you can still co-witness with these suppressor height sights. Also, I never had an issue with the dot coming loose at all during the course of fire. The meta trigger. Now, usually I really like to tinker with guns. I like to get in there and see where others could improve on the designs of the manufacturer. And I love to change out triggers myself. But before that, I like to put at least a few hundred rounds through the stock trigger so that I really know the difference between the two. Now with the XDM Elite's meta trigger, I wasn't mad at it at all. It's a nice flat face trigger, which I prefer. The very, very crisp break and a nice positive short reset, which made follow-up shots very, very easy. Now position of the slide release. It is very convenient to hit that slide release. Maybe a little too convenient. For me in my grip position, sometimes my thumb would accidentally actuate that slide release when I needed to reload because the gun was empty. Uh, that was kind of a bummer, but it was really just me having to adjust my grip a little bit for that. Again, not a big deal, just something that I had to be aware of on my end. The grip texture. The XDM Elite OSP is a pretty large gun. The cool thing is they give you uh, interchangeable back straps. So no matter what your hand size, you're probably gonna find a proper grip on this. I didn't wear gloves and it was pushing 100, so my hands were sweaty. Never did I feel like I didn't have a proper grip on the pistol. And it wasn't too much to wear, you know, a couple hundred rounds in, my hands are hurting. So I think the grip was great. The mag release. I love that Springfield made it an ambi mag release. And I was curious because it, it's fairly small, so I was wondering would I miss some of the larger mag releases of some of my other pistols. I didn't actually have any issues actuating this mag release. And I really liked that it was a small circle because at different angles, I could still actuate that mag release with different parts of my thumb. So that was a huge plus. And even under duress, never did I miss hitting that mag release. The flared mag well might be one of my favorite features. Between the stainless steel mags and that flared mag well, I was looking forward to reloading. It was so fun and so easy. 
blindfolded, I could reload that thing super fast. And the mags were super durable and super smooth, feeding reliably 100% every single time. The beaver tail safety. Now, if you would have asked me about this prior to running this class or handling this pistol, I might have looked at you sidelong and says, I'm not sure about that feature. Well, throughout the course of the day, never once did I even think about the beaver tail safety and never once did it get in my way. It simply was there. So if you like that extra layer of security and protection, they've got you covered. So general reliability. Now, during the course of this class, we fired over 500 rounds each. It was pushing 100 degrees, and the range is all dust, dirt, and rocks. When you drop a mag, it hits that dirt. We're stepping on them. They're getting kicked. They're down there for a little while. You pick them up. You load them back, back in the gun. These are harsh conditions. We don't baby the guns. We invite them to fail, because if your life is depending on a gun, you need to know when and where that gun might fail you. And I can happily say, with the XDM Elite OSP, zero malfunctions, zero failures of any kind. The gun went go every time I told it to. Now circling back around to secondary testing gear, the STAC Kiwi pouches are amazing. It's a mixture of Cordura fabric and Kydex inserts. Now there are a lot of mag pouches out there and grabbing that mag, that's real easy. Now how is it putting that mag back in? With the STAC Kiwis, it is a breeze at any angle, even blindfolded. And they're super minimalist, they don't get in your way. I also had the STAC Shooter's Belt. It's an inner outer style, which means you have a Velcro inner, and then the main belt attaches around that. Now this is great because I can keep my belt completely configured and I don't have to move stuff around. I simply just put on the Velcro inner and then attach the main belt to that. They also use Cobra belt buckles, which are super tested and reliable. And for the holster with T-Rex arms, their unwavering dedication to the Second Amendment and their support for the gun community is second to none. They make a great Kydex holster that has a lot of retention without any secondary devices. They also make great use of the Safari Land QLS system, which is my preferred method of attaching a holster. And finally, the Vortex Venom Red Dot. Now, my version was a 6 MOA dot, super easy to pick up. The Venom has a bit larger viewing window, which is really, really great for a fast sight picture and keeping that dot within your field of vision. Another thing that I like is that the battery compartment is on the top of the optic, so it's very easy accessible to change that battery, and it doesn't rely on the actual mounting screws to keep that battery in place, which can come loose under a lot of fire. So my final thoughts, the XDM Elite OSP is a joy to run. It's a bit larger of a pistol, so recoil is pretty negligible. It's extremely smooth and the gun wants to go fast. And with that flared magwell and those stainless steel mags, you're gonna love when you hit slide lock because that means you get to reload it again. The ability to attach an optic and a suppressor is just icing on the cake. And visually, this has to be one of my favorite pistols. I would certainly recommend the XDM Elite OSP if you're into the larger tactical style of firearms for their ease of use and modularity.